A new documentary on the Trump family is at the centre of a political firestorm in the US. Parts of the film from British director Alex Holder have been subpoenaed by the committee investigating the January the 6th insurrection at the US Capitol. The young filmmaker had extraordinary access to the family, including the former president, in the lead up to and just after the 2020 election. Okay. Evangelicals for Trump, then I did Indian Americans for Trump, then I did Asian Pacific yeah, Americans for Trump. And He's taught Republicans that it's okay to fight back. Can we talk for a minute about January 6th? Yeah. Alex Holder joins us now from Los Angeles. Alex, good morning. Welcome to News Breakfast. Nice to be with you. Congratulations on the documentary. Uh, you achieve what every journalist, what every filmmaker dreams of, <laughs> getting unparalleled, pretty much unrestricted access to the former president and his family. So what was your pitch? How did you get it? Uh, I mean, I think it was more that they, they genuinely thought they were going to win the election. I mean, some of them still do think they won the election. So it wasn't actually that difficult. I think, you know, what, what really got me through the doors was obviously the, uh, the introduction. I was introduced to them by a mutual friend and then the, the hubris just took over. So I think there was a few reasons. One is they generally thought they were going to win. Two, you know, potentially uh, I got an English accent, so maybe that helped. And, uh, you yeah, we know that Trump is pretty obsessed with, uh, with the royal family. So, you yeah, know, my, my Britishness may have uh, assisted in this. But I think at the end of the day, it was certainly they really thought they were going to win. Okay, and were there any restrictions at all? Any any no go zones? Any no go areas? No, I mean they, you know, we we interviewed him in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we interviewed Trump in the White House in Mar-a-Lago in Bedminster. We interviewed the kids uh, multiple times. There was only two occasions where they said turn the camera off, and uh, one occasion was during this moment when uh, quite a few of the uh, campaign officials were getting a bit irritable that there was a guy with a camera running around this uh, this secret meeting or something. But so we, ca we captured some stuff there, but mm -hmm. not, um, not everything. Uh, one thing that struck me, and I, I guess it should not have been of any surprise uh, watching your documentary, is that Donald Trump is a man obsessed with his image, how he looks, he, his brand, so much so that he was ordering, uh, making uh, helpful quote-unquote suggestions as to the placement of items in the background yes. of, of the shoots. Uh, tell us what it was like dealing with him one-on-one -on -one and, and did you get that same impression? I mean, the truth is that Donald Trump is actually a very simple, strange person. I mean, he li literally only cares about himself and anything that he's associated with. So you know, one example in Mar-a-Lago, he would come inside and, and we were doing small talk before the interview. And small talk with Donald Trump is, it goes something like this. It's, uh, Mr. President, the last time I saw you, we were in the White House. And he goes, oh, the White House is nice, but this is much nicer. Like he has to compare everything that he does or everything that he owns or touches with something else. And his is always better. And obviously there's that clip um, which he moves a glass of water around on a table for about 90 seconds or so and gets it directly in the middle and what's interesting is that he's, he's actually right that the shot does look better when he plays around with it but those are the things that he cares about it's all about himself it's all about the brand it's all about Donald Trump uh, you also got uh, tremendous access to Donald Trump's kids, Ivanka, Don Jr. and Eric, following them around to campaign events in the lead-up to the election. And it's fair to say they all have uh, rather different personalities, different motivations. I think so. I think that, that the unifying factor is that they all care about the same thing that their father cares about, which is the brand. They will do anything they can to ensure that their father would remain in power. And this idea of... Ivanka not necessarily agreeing with her father's position with respect to Jan, well, with respect to the election itself, is you know, it just wasn't accurate. I mean, when I interviewed her a few days after the Attorney General uh, said that there was no basis whatsoever to uh, agree with any of his election claims, uh, she did not accept his position, which is actually what she said she did um, to, to the January 6th committee. Uh, they care about one thing, which is ensuring that their father and the brand remains you know, always a winner and always in charge.
I want to finish with January the 6th and uh, Alex, props to your cameraman, Michael Cromart, who got some absolutely yeah. extraordinary footage of, of the rioting, the, the insurrection as it unfolded and as we mentioned, parts of the film have been subpoenaed by the January the 6th committee. Uh, so take us through that day. Uh, you obviously were, uh, had great interest in, in filming uh, what happened, listening to the President's speech earlier just outside the White House. Take us through the, how, how the day unfolded for you as a documentary maker. Uh, it was... It was, it was an absolutely astonishing day. The thing was, is that it was almost inevitable. I mean, the night before, I'd said to Michael, who you just mentioned, uh, you know that Trump's going to get them all to march on the Capitol tomorrow. And I was saying that in an elevator as we are going up to the hotel the night before. And it was such a ridiculous thing to say, but we still planned accordingly. And, I mean, our plan didn't really work out. I mean, it was like being in a war zone. I mean, one of the shots that Michael captures is, is one of Trump's own supporters being crushed to death on the stairs leading up to the Capitol. I mean, you know, this is, it, it was it's such an extraordinary situation. And, and, and prior to that, you have the President of the United States inciting a crowd to go there. I mean, you know, to me, there was really, it, it wasn't much of a difficulty to understand what, why A, they were there in the first place, and B, why they all went to the Capitol thereafter. I mean, he literally said, we have to fight like hell. And he said, we need to take back our country. And, and, and many other things as well. You know, previously, he had his, his kids speaking, uh, Don Jr. was speaking, Eric spoke, and obviously Giuliani himself and um, a couple of other people that were just riding up the crowd. But there was this feeling of, of like almost like a religious fervor that actually intervening in this ceremonial process of certifying the Electoral College results, if you intervene in that process, Trump could remain in office. And people genuinely were praying that this would happen. And it didn't happen because Mike Pence didn't do it. They said he should have done. Obviously, he shouldn't have done it, and he was correct. Uh, so they then all went to the Capitol, and I mean, some of these people wanted to assassinate. I mean, we heard that. I heard that you know, through uh, through the crowd. So it was an absolutely extraordinary and horrifying, horrifying day. And Donald Trump is absolutely to blame for it. Mm. Extraordinary uh, access and footage as well, uh, recorded by you, Michael, and your team, Alex. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Pleasure.